Okay, so I'm just gonna start. GG, I'm just gonna start explaining um, 3.57 right now. Uh, what you can do is you can start selecting the bottom face. I mean the XY plane or the top view basically. And I'm just gonna go into this predefined function over here, which is this. It's called the elongated hole. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a straight line like that and protrude this outward. Now, as I do that, I'm going to mention this. Um, they've given the total length to be 100, so I can give this as 50. And um, they've also mentioned the distance between the centers as 180. As you just check your textbook as you're performing these. Uh, uh, dimensions so it's 180 what I'm gonna do what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna use these same centers mm -hmm. to draw those small pockets now I'm also gonna make both these points symmetric with this axis and I'm also gonna position these points at least one on the on the horizontal axis now as I do this, I'm quickly going to finish off those pockets as well. And the pockets are mentioned as two holes of dia 37. So I'm quickly going to give that and just select this and mirror that. Um, again for anyone else who's watching this video, what I'm doing is I'm going to be explaining the small, the different various individual parts to make. And the textbook I'll be referring is um, K. I mean, yeah, K. R. Gopal Krishna machine drawing. And right now I'm I'm making the figure 3.57. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pad this for 25. And I'm gonna keep my plane over there itself. So I'm not gonna be mirror extending it. So after I get this, now I'm gonna go into this view. <coughs> my YZ view and I'm just gonna go into my sketch now this over here what I'll be doing is I'll be drawing an L shape over here to get that kind of arm so to, do, to draw the L I'm just gonna go into my profile and just draw a regular arm like that you can constrain it later after I get this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this coincident and I'm also going to make this end coincident with this point. Yeah. Now, once I have this, I can start mentioning these dimensions. Um, by general calculation, they've mentioned this inner arc to be 25 and the outer arc to be 50. The radius, that is, when you're giving the edge fillet. So, from that, I can figure out that this distance is supposed to be 25. And um, what else? The 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 length. What I can do is I can give the length. Um. Okay, so if you look at the top view, which is the right hand side figure of three point seven, you can see the circle. The diameter of the outermost circle is given as fifty. And what I'll be doing is I'll be mentioning this total distance as 50 as well. So basically, this um, the center of that top hole is going to lie on this po on this portion. So I'm going to give this as 50. One sec. I'm just going to just check out those readings again. Or actually, you know what? Instead of doing this, we'll just delete this portion. I'll go back into my sketch, and what I'm gonna do is I will select, um, let's say, okay, I'll select this surface. The, again, my XY plane itself. And I'll go into my sketcher, and what I'm gonna do is, one sec. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish drawing this figure as well, and um, the dimensions for this circle is 
is given as the outer diameter is 100 and the inner diameter is mentioned as 45 now they've also what they've mentioned is the distance from the center over here to the act to the point the centers the line the axis at which these centers lie on now since i made these centers lie on this axis i can take the distance from here from that point to here and this distance is mentioned to me as 130 now you will have to remember um when i go back into this the your figure is going to lie over here now but if you look on the left hand side um on the same figure that's 3.57 if you look on the left hand side figure you will see that this the this pad does not lie on the like suppose if i pad this right now for like say 50 it does not lie over here it's more elevated upward to do that you'll have to just go into your pad select more now they the total distance is given as 50 and it's going to be but the actual thickness is the actual thickness is 50 but the distance from here to the upper face is 100 that's given in the figure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pad this for 100 and it's going to go till there now to remove this below portion i'm going to over here on my second limit i'm going to give minus 50 so if you notice now okay so if you notice now this is actually elevated upward now it's not on the same plane if you see it compared to before if i don't give, if i give this as 0 and this only as 50 it's on this plane which is wrong it's not supposed to be on this so you go into more pad this for the entire length and then remove the portion that you don't want so i don't want 50 so i'm going to get like that now i can go into my side view go to my sketch and now i can make that the l shape that i was talking about so i'll just make a quick uh thing like this again same procedure as i did before i'm going to make this coincident and i'm also going to make this point and this point coincident then um i'm going to make the bottom face coincident over here and just move this portion upward a bit again this dimension is mentioned as 25 and this dimension as well is mentioned as 25 and i'm just going to position this somewhere at the center so that will be about there yeah so i'm just gonna make it coincident with this so it will automatically position itself in the center i shouldn't have made this pocket but either because this is gonna be padded now but i'm gonna i'll make a pocket again at the end over here so now if i go back into my sketch and if i give a pad the pad is gonna be i'm gonna mirror extend the pad i don't know why this function of mine isn't working Okay, but anyways, yeah, so I'm gonna mirror extend my pad and give my pad for 50. So it's gonna cover the entire radius, it's gonna cover the entire diameter of your circle. All you have left right now is to mention this pocket, I mean, this edge fillet as 50 and this edge fillet as 25 and then yeah almost that's about it all the, now yeah and then you have this to remove Oops. cancel that go to your sketch make a pocket of 45 yeah and this dimension 
Cool. As one third, yeah. So go back and pocket this. Yeah. So this is your 3.57. How long did this take? 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to save this, I'm just going to cancel it. Now, okay, so what's next? Okay, now I'm just going to show you how to do 3.58. So, what I'm going to do is, um, like I'm going to start off with the top face itself. I'll actually, so I'm going to select the surface and go to my sketch. And what I'll do is I'll first make the central portion, which is, which my, basically looks something like this. Yeah. Okay. And um, what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to accordingly position this. First make the side symmetric. It's been a while since I've done these, um, so my approach may be different than the approach that you take, so you can just, what do you say, um, I, you can either follow these, the way or how I'm going about it, or you can probably figure out another way as well. Now, they've given the distance from here to, there's going to be a, a cylindrical uh, pad that comes over here. So they've given the distance from here to the center of that cylindrical pad as 158. But we know the radius of that pad is 25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the length as 158 minus 25. So it's 133 in total. And this length is going to be 45. And this length is going to be 87. This right here. Okay. Now, how is it moving? Okay, it's moving up and down. Yeah. So, what I can do over here, I can either make one of these ends, or what I can do is I'll just make both the ends symmetric with this axis. Okay, wait, no. Okay, wait, hold on. How about I just constrain one with the central axis, it should work then, yeah. Okay, so I have this now. Now what I'm just going to quickly do is, I can draw the same figure again. I, I've made sure I have that parallelism, because I want that parallelism. Now they've mentioned this dimension to be 22. Similarly over here as well it's 22. And this total distance is given as 68. And from here, oops, from here to here, it's mentioned as 24. So this is your central portion. So we're just going to pat this for 10. Okay, I'm going to mirror extend this. And yeah, obviously. Okay, 5 mirror extend. So it's going to be 10 on both sides. So after I have this, what I'm going to do is I'll select. Oh, and then mirror extend it. Okay, yeah, fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this plane again. Make sure, yeah. So this is where I want it, or what you can actually do is, um, don't select this surface, turn your figure completely around, and select this surface. 
So when you're gonna, because if you look at your figure, the circular cylinder that we're gonna draw from draw here, it starts from here, and it goes. It starts from there and goes. It bulges out a bit over here. So um, that's I'm gonna start over here. Now they've mentioned this, the diameter of this to be fifty, and um, what I can do is I can make this end and that point coincident so that it just closes the surface. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna exit my workbench over here. I'm not so sure. I think it's 60 is the pad length, reverse direction. I think it's either 60 or 50. Let me just check this. Yeah, it's 60. To see this, this portion is gonna bulge out more over here, and that's what you want. Okay, I think it's not 60. I think it should be 50. Let me see how 50 is. Yeah, it's actually 50. Okay. And there's a pocket as well over here, so we can finish making that pocket as well. Um, make a hole. Give this dimension as 25, as mentioned in the figure just below this view. And I'm just gonna make this end and this end concentricity. There we go. Go back and pocket. Pocket up to last, a pocket 50. You're gonna get the same thing. Now all we have left is again you can just select your front view face. I'm treating this as my front view and the upper thing as my top view. And then I'm just gonna go into my predefined functions and draw a rectangle over here. I'm gonna make um I'm gonna make one of these uh, coincident over there and mention this is 12 the total length if you see is a bunch of different readings all adding up together it's 20 plus 70 plus 20 again yeah and this portion lies um what do you say on this at the center of this so what i can do is um i can make this end and this end symmetric with my horizontal axis and that's automatically going to position this in the center of that of the figure that i just drew going to go back and just pat this Pad this for a total length of 110. Reverse direction. Pad it for 110. There we go. Yeah, and I think that's about it. Oh, uh, you have few holes over here. Select the surface. You have totally four holes. Draw one. And mention this dimension as mm, it's a four holes of 20 dia, and the distance from this hole to this plane is mentioned as 20. Sorry, yeah, okay. You can, if you're referring the top view and the side view, you can find out. Both these dimensions are mentioned as 20 each. Then I'm just gonna select this and okay, I'm, I can't mirror it actually because my axis is over here. Had my axis been in the center of the figure, I could have directly mirrored it. If I mirror this right now, it's gonna come in this blank space. So, yeah, see? So instead of doing that, I just have to draw. Four holes again. So mention this dimension as twenty. Yeah. From here to here it's twenty again. And from here to here it's twenty. 
Now I can select both these and mirror them with respect to my horizontal axis. And there we go. Now you're just going to exit your workbench and pocket these. And you, you're done. You're right now done. Oh, you have a few edge fillets over here. Sorry. There's an edge fillet over here and an edge fillet over here for seven. And an edge fillet over here for twenty. And an edge fillet over here for twelve. Make sure you select only that side. Oh. What's that name? Okay, cancel this. Then this is supposed to be 60 itself. Because only then this edge fillet works. Impossible determination local. Okay, this basically, this error is occurring because the. How do I explain this? The edge fillet that we're making is gonna end up being bigger than the um, bigger than this surface itself. That's why this ribbon kind of thing is forming. So okay, just for explanation's sake, I'll just give an edge fillet for five. But it's actually supposed to be more than that. I have no clue why it's not coming. Yeah, delete. Okay, let's see. 12, no, 10. Yeah, okay. 10 is coming. Can you see? It's just a little beyond that. And that's why that ribbon is the, the error called the ribbon is coming. So if you look at this now, this is how your figure will basically look like. Again, not saving, deleting this. I'm gonna go into my path design again. So that's 3.58 done. I'm gonna do 3.59 now. You put an average of about 10 minutes per diagram, which is not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the top view over here, which is the bottom figure in 3.58. Um, I'm just gonna quickly draw a box or a rectangle rather. And I'm going to make both these ends symmetric. One sec. Mm, yeah. Okay. And they've mentioned this distance. And I'm going to make this as well symmetric. Sorry. And they mentioned this distance to me as 75. And this distance to me as a hundred. Okay. And what I'm right now gonna do is I'm just gonna add this. Before I pad it, I'll finish drawing these two pockets. Make sure they line the same line and mention these dimensions. Okay, you have two holes of twenty and that's fine. This as well. And the distance from each other is mentioned as 62. And they lie 37 mm from here. 37. Well, pushes it almost in the center. Okay, anyways. So I'm just gonna quickly go back out and pat this upward for about 20. Yeah. After I have this, what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna select this my ZX plane so I can get the side view. Wait. Just go back out. I want to see, yeah, okay, so if I go into my plane now, it's rotating, yeah. So 
the distance from here to here is 30 cent. So I'll be drawing my figure this way. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, this is how I want it. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm just gonna quickly do is using my profile itself, I'm gonna draw a straight line like this. Uh kind of a box kind of thing and go down like this. I'm not so sure what I'm doing right now but I'll try figuring it out. Okay. No, I actually don't do this. Just forget about that. Hold on, I lost my pick. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to make a random circle over here. I'm going to make one more circle over here. Okay, whatever. And mention these dimensions. This, the inner dimension over here is mentioned as 45. And the outer dimension over here is mentioned as 40 radius. So it's going to be 80. Okay. And... Um, the distance from the center to this point is given as 130. The height is given as 62. So from here to here is 62. And there we go. Uh, what I'm going to now do is draw a straight line. So it touches. Yeah. Tangency and it's coincident over there and close this off basically. Um, one more straight line, so it's tangent and coinciding. Mm, yeah, I think this should do it. Um, just close this figure off. Yeah, now I'm just gonna trim out these remaining portions. I'm going to trim this and this. Now I'm also going to mention these distances now. Okay, so that's 62. Um, the distance from this point to here is mentioned as 135. And the, the distance from my center to this point, horizontal, right click and then horizontal, is mentioned as 120. Yeah, anything else? Which direction is this moving up and down? Okay, so I'm just going to make this point coincident on this line. There we go. Now, quickly to finish this off, I have one more thing to remove. Okay, so you can now see your figure taking shape. Just go back out. Since and um, since I positioned my figure on the set, make made sure my planes lie on the center. Now it's easier. I can just pad this. Hold on. Define in workbench. I'm gonna just pad this. Make sure it's mirror extended. And they've told me to pad that totally for 120. For 25, so I'm gonna give 12.5 bad. Yeah, and just mention the remaining things that are left. I have an edge for it over here for 30. It's an edge for it on both these ends. So mention this edge for it for 30. Your figure slowly taking its shape and these edge fillets are mentioned as 20 can you see your figure yeah I think that's about it so you're done with this as well figure 3.59 okay. 
now I'm gonna do 3.58.5960 okay so I'm quickly gonna do 3.60 now one sec yeah okay okay so to draw 3.60 I'm first gonna draw the the top face is what I consider it to be it's the bottom figure in 3.68 it's basically a square or I mean a rectangle rather and I'm gonna make these both ends symmetric what I'm gonna be doing is um, if you notice your figure you have a kind of a, a, a circle kind of thing like this over here and they've mentioned this distance to be 60 okay but what I'll be doing I won't be drawing it like this I can directly draw a regular rectangle and then I can um, try engine fill it I can do it like this as well but I don't know take the trouble of constantly edge filleting it or actually um, yeah I'll actually do it like this um, I've always found it easier to draw the figure completely and then pad rather than using the other functions because in case you don't find the functions in your workbench and then you won't know what to do next so I'm quickly gonna make these two ends initially symmetric I'm gonna do the same thing over here that's already symmetric and this distance is going to be 60 and the di diameter of here is also going to be 60 yeah and just going to quickly go into my tremor tool remove that and remove this then just quickly constrain these 60 30 radius is fine in what direction is this moving now Okay. Um make these symmetric. You can mention this dimension as thirty. So you have your plane in the center. Go back out and you're gonna pad this for the first phase which is twelve. Now whatever you make, this is gonna be your base and you're gonna make everything else on top of this. So I'm going to select this again, go to my sketch and over here I'm going to draw a circle and another circle. Before I do that let me just make this concentric concentricity to have that in the to share the same center. Now if you see your top view figure which is going to be looking like this, you have in total four circles. So you're going to draw all four circles and then a tiny circle over here yeah now just over here now you'll have to start mentioning your dimensions this is given to me as 10 the innermost the outermost is mentioned as 60 the peripheral one is mentioned as 50 and this one is mentioned as 30 so after I have this my work is for this figure is slowly coming to a uh, finish. I'm going to pad this now for the remaining length, which is going to be 27 minus 12, since we've already padded for 12. 27 minus 12. So you're going to get this. And the only thing left is to make a small pocket over here. One sec. Yeah. Okay, now I'll finish off that later. I'm now gonna select the top this the XY plane which is my top view basically and I'm just gonna take my um my profile and I'm gonna draw a kind of a figure that's supposed to look wait, I should have done a little more that's gonna look something like the portion that comes right after that. I'm going to try to limit myself from getting certain concerns like this. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to mention these this angle to be 60. This as well as 60. They've given me this distance. I mean, they've made, they made this coincident. This is coincident over here as well. And this. They've given us this distance to be 30. Make both these ends symmetric with the horizontal axis. No. Um, before we do that, mention this distance as 8 and this total distance as 16. Okay, now to figure out this mess that keeps moving, it should get constrained. I don't know why it isn't getting symmetric. Okay, wait. Delete that. Delete one of these. And now you can give this the distance. Make it the horizontal distance. Oh, vertical distance, sorry. And give it as 30. What else is moving? Did we mention this? Yes, we did. 16. So just keep constraining this. If you want me to show you this again, I don't mind. Um, I'll just delete this whole thing. Um, I'm gonna go into my sketch. I'm quickly gonna draw a figure that's supposed to look almost like it. You'll get constraints like this. Try to make sure you don't get that because if you do, uh, trying to figure out what went wrong is gonna be difficult. So every time you have this, move your cursor a little bit aside and then the constraint should go. So I'll move it just a bit. Yeah. Okay, after I have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this end coincident initially. I'm gonna do that as well for these two. And for this, I'm also going to make both these ends symmetric. Oops. Oops. Symmetric with this face. And after I've got that, I'm going to mention this, dim this distance as 8 and this total distance as 16. After I have this, quickly gonna finish this off by mentioning this dimension, this angle as 60. Do the same over here. No, okay, it's already done. And this as well as 16. Oh yeah and mention this the distance between these two points the vertical distance is going to be 30 so that's about it now i'm going to quickly go back and pad this for the total height of the figure which is it's like i lost my dimensions again which is 63 Okay, hold on. But when you get this kind of an error, go to your sketch, select the sketch, right click on it, and define in the workbench. Once you have that, just select it again and pad this for whatever dimension you need it to be pad padded for. After I have this, all I have left to do before I do the pocket over there, I'm going to make the bottom face over here. Um, this is going to be 25, I think. Yeah, 25. And the distance is going to be... Oh, instead of giving the distance, I'll make... I'll select this as well. 
and give concentricity. Go back, pad this for four. Yeah. Oh, I should have mentioned this as well. I'll go my sketcher. Finish drawing the the hole as well over here. Okay, well. And this is going to be ten. Go back. Okay. And you're going to edge for like this for like about five years. Okay, not five. Yeah, okay, five is fine. And go back over here. Select that surface. Go into your sketcher. Instead of drawing a circle again and constraining, what you can do is just select that. You'll have mark an object over here, which basically makes this object, I mean, your, this, um, whatever you've selected, it, it highlights it. Right click on it. You'll see this thing called mark one object. Open it and you'll see isolate. When you isolate it, it automatically becomes, it, it's positioned in the same place, but it's, it won't be constrained. I don't always suggest doing this, but, it just makes things easier at times. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just quickly gonna constrain it and give the dimension. I mean make it lie at the center. This wasn't necessary but just to show you I'm doing it. Uh, so that's why I mentioned the constraints. Now I'm just gonna pocket this and we're done. Wait. Didn't mention the pocket depth. Um, 100 or whatever. Yeah, there we go. So this is 3.60 done. Oh wait, not yet done. There's a there's a hole over here. Don't forget to do that. Check your figure twice or thrice just to make sure you've done everything. This hole is 15, and the height is again given to me in parts so open this it's given as 12 plus 9 plus 21 okay and go back and pocket this I, I didn't mention the depth of this because there's nothing over here anyways so and they want the hole to be true and there you go this is Figure 3.60. Close this. Mm, what have I not done? Okay, uh, 3.63. Again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off just like how we did. Um, I think it was 3. Point, hold on one sec. Just as how we did 3.59, the procedure for 3.63 is almost the same. What you're gonna do is select the surface and start off with the base. You're gonna draw a rectangle. Open these, make these, I mean, select these, make these symmetric, make these as well symmetric. Then you're gonna mention this distance as you can take this as 60 and this as well as 60 and they've mentioned two holes over here and the diameter for each of them is given as 10 yeah and what else? The distance between each of the holes. I'm going to mirror this. I'm just going to give it the axis. The distance between each of the holes is given as 20. Hmm. They've not mentioned the... Okay, I'm just going to consider them to be 5. Oh, they are... Okay, they are 10. That's fine. I need to give this distance as well as 10. Yeah. I'm gonna select this now. 
mirror this with respect to this axis and go back and now I'm going to pad this for 12 I'm keeping my plane over there itself I'm going to give an edge for it for these which is again mentioned as radius 10 and if I select the surface now I can finish doing most of these things here as well. They've, there's a small kind of box, a rectangular kind of thing over here. It's mentioned, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's mentioned as 10 and the height, the height of this as well is mentioned as 6. It's The distance is actually given from here to here as 18. But since we know this to be as 12, so 6 it is. And what else? The distance from here to the end is 36, no, 30. Okay. And we're going to go back and pad this for the whole length, which is mid extended 30. So you have that as well. Select the side view again, the YZ plane. Go into your sketch. Now you have what I can say is something just like the L. You're gonna proceed using the almost the same kind of technique. You're gonna make two circles over here. This distance, the diameter of this is 20 itself. And this diameter is mentioned as 30 Oops. 30 then they've mentioned the height from the center to this point as 40 yes and this total length from the center to here yeah is 90 Make sure you select the dimension before giving your things. Okay, now all you have left to do is draw your profile kind of thing. The L. I'm just gonna draw it like this. Oops, because I'm gonna make these this end tangent over here, and this as well tangent. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make this, push it inward a little bit, make this and this surface coincident. This point and this point coincident. Okay, after I've done this, just mention the, what do you say? Mm, this thickness okay um, they mentioned the distance from here to the center point as 55 now I'm just gonna remove whatever I don't need I don't need this this or this inner portion I'm gonna go back again and pad this now when I'm gonna pad this if you notice the bottom view there's a thin portion and then the cylindrical portion is bulged out more. This portion is 30 and the bulged out portion is for 40, the cylindrical. So I'm going to pad this for 30 itself. That's 15 on both sides. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I can select the surface. Go into my sketch. Just draw two circles again. Or you can do the isolate thing, but either ways you'll be constraining it, so I'll just say continue doing this. It isn't like it's a big deal. It's not like making two circles is a big deal. My fingers keep going. Okay. And mention this is 30. And this is 20, yes. I can mention Okay, instead of mentioning all those distances, I'm just gonna select 
push this away for a sec and select this and select this and just give concentricity it's automatically going to instead of mentioning one instead of mentioning this length and this just do that ok now I'm just going to go back and pad this outward for 5 so I'm going to get this bulge what I'm now going to do is open my tree this last pad select that make sure your mirror option is selected and mirror that so I have my bulge now I'm just going to finish this off by giving this edge fillet as 15 where is my fail bone? Yeah. 15 and this is mentioned to me as 5 also this inside edge is mentioned again as an edge fillet 5 I think that's about it oh wait there's a hole over here 4 8 And the distance from this to the central axis is mentioned as 20. Yeah. I'm gonna go back, pocket this up to last, is fine. And you have a true and true hole. I think that's about it. Oh, wait, you have a stiff knot over here. Now, some of you might not know how to do a stiff knot. A stiff knot option is found in this. It's called solid combine. It's found in all your pad options, etc. Open this and you'll have your stiffener option over here. What your stiffener basically does is if you draw a line and give the stiffener, it's going to make that line thick. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select my side view again. I'm going to draw a straight line like this is fine. If you look at your figure, this is going all the way up to the end. So search for the point. Once you get the point, select it and make it coincident. Okay. And same thing I'm going to do over here. Make this and this coincident. You can move this up a bit if you want. Yeah, there should be fine. Go back out and select your stiffener and mention the distance. It's as simple as that. Just give 5 and that's it. This is 3.63 as well.